Hello everyone and welcome to this workshop and course on molecular physical and computational virology. I'm Martin Soñora from the Biomolecular Simulation Group at the Institute Pasteur de Montevideo. And today we will dive into a crucial part of our daily work, uh, the command line in Linux. And uh, I know that it can seem intimidating at first, but uh, once you get the hang of it, Linux and its uh, batch shell become incredibly powerful tools for handling any computational task. Um, basically, our workshop is divided into two parts. First, we will cover uh, Linux, what it is, how it's structured, and why it's essential in scientific computing. And hopefully you will learn how to navigate the system, manage files, understand why so many researchers choose Linux. And then we will move to explore uh, bash scripting, where you will see how to automate tasks, saving time and reducing errors. And by the end of the session, you will feel a bit more confident using the command line to uh, manage files and write script that streamline your work. Uh, so let's start with the basic uh, um, what is an operating system. Uh, an operating system is a crucial layer uh, of uh, software uh, that uh, sits between a computer's hardware and the application we use and it acts as a bridge. Uh, it's a bridge uh, allowing these two components to communicate. Uh, so without an operating system, uh, hardware would just sit there and users and applications, for example, wouldn't be able to interact with it. So uh, let's see how the components of a computer work together. Um, the hardware, we uh, everybody knows. Um, this includes, for example, uh, the CPU, the memory, and devices such as uh, hard drives. And um, so the operating system manages all these components, ensuring they work together smoothly. And then we do have uh, the kernel, and actually the kernel. Uh, is uh, the the herd of, of of the operating system handling all the communication between the hardware and the applications and uh, it uh, ensures that uh, resources like uh, like cpu power for example or or memory are allocated properly and in for example uh, also it prevents uh, conflicts between the different processes and then we do have the applications. Uh, the applications are uh, the program we use, like, uh, for example, text editors or browsers. So <clears throat> instead of uh, interacting directly with the hardware, they go through the operating system to request uh, resources, like, for example, saving a file to the hard drive, for example. And then we have uh, the users. Uh, that's us, obviously, we interact with the computer through a graphical user interface or through a command line interface uh, like a bash. Uh, so the operating system translates our actions like, uh, let's say, clicking an icon or typing a command uh, into instructions the hardware understands, for example. So uh, this figure here uh, illustrate uh, or summarize uh, this uh, slide uh, where uh, the user, for example, interacts with applications. The applications request uh, resources from the operating system. Uh, uh, so the, the kernel manage the hardware's resources, ensuring everything runs uh, efficiently. So uh, why Linux is so important? Mm, so because Linux is an open source operating system that 
stand out for its uh, efficiency and customizability, and it's uh, the go-to operating system for for environments like servers and supercomputers, and uh, handling multiple users and large data efficiently, thanks to its uh, multi-user capability and resource management. And uh, just a little bit about the history, about uh, the, the Linux story begins uh, in 1991 when Linux Torvalds created a kernel, a free kernel accessible to everyone, uh, but uh, frustrated by the limited and costly operating system, Linux Torvalds launched Linux as an open source project inviting developers worldwide to contribute. Uh, so this global effort quickly turned uh, Linux into a powerful and uh, a free alternative to proprietary systems. So today, uh, Linux is uh, used everywhere. Uh, for example, servers rely on its stability for years of uninterrupted operation, for example. Uh, embedded uh, devices, for example, uh, like, uh, let's say, smartphones, uh, for example, Android run, uh, runs uh, under Linux, uh, routers, uh, TVs, all those devices uh, run on Linux, for example. Uh, and then, uh, obviously, the, super the supercomputers use it for its, uh, its performance and scalability. So Linux thrives because uh, of its open source model, allowing contributions from individuals and companies around the globe. So this collaboratory approach has, uh, in certain in certain point, uh, reshaped uh, software development, providing that uh, the the global teamwork can drive innovation uh from cloud computing to internet infrastructure for example linux powers millions of devices worldwide uh, making it one of the most influential operating system in the world so one of the great things about linux it's it's the the, the great variety of dist distributions or distro available i mean each distro is built for a specific needs, obviously, but they all share the same Linux kernel. And let's quickly go over a few of the most popular ones. Uh, probably everybody knows Ubuntu. Uh, Ubuntu is idea for, for beginners. It's a, a user-friendly, super stable, and way, widely used in, uh, in development environments. There is also a strong community support, which make it uh, a, a great uh, starting point. Uh, then we do have Fedora, known for 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 being uh, cutting edge. It's uh, great for for developers who wants to who wants the la the latest uh, software and features, and it's uh, linked to Red Hat, so you get access to some uh, and uh, enterprise uh, level features. Then we have uh, CentOS, which is uh, perfect for uh, enterprise environment where uh, stability is key. Uh, it's uh, it's the, the, the community version of, of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and it's popular on servers due to its uh, long-term stability. Uh, but uh, the, during the last year, uh, CentOS is not more available, and there is another version which is called uh, Rock Linux. And then we, we have a uh, uh, Debian. Uh, it's a, a solid choice for both uh, servers and 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 desktop computers, and uh, it's a uh, uh, Debian is it's extremely stable and focuses on on free open source software. Uh, I mean, many many other distro like uh, Ubuntu are based on on on, on Debian. Uh, so while uh, this distro differs like uh, differing tools and and user experience, they all rely on the Linux kernel, which uh, handles communication between software and hardware. So the the beauty of Linux is its uh, flexibility. Uh, whether you are running a server, developing software, or just uh, need a reliable desktop, there is a distro uh, 
that fits you. And then uh, this uh, slide is uh, amazing because uh, it's, uh, it's showing uh, uh, how far Linux has evolved. Uh, it visually tracks the, the development of Dijkstra over time, each uh, build on the same Linux kernel, but designed for different purposes. Uh, at, the, at the early route, we, we see the first versions like um, like Debian or Slackware here. Essentially, uh, I mean Debian has uh, has been uh, a foundation for for many many distros, including Ubuntu, which is now one of the most uh, popular Linux versions. And as you see, uh, there are many many branches, and uh, over time, Dijkstra started to kind of a specialization. Uh, for example, there is a, here is a Red Hat led to Fedora and uh, and CentOS, uh, uh, often used in enterprise settings. From Debian, we got, as I said, we got uh, Ubuntu, which is uh, later spawned Dijkstra like a Linux mine, known for being super user friendly. Um, but as you can see, there is a great diversity of distributions. So Linux adapted to many niches from general users to the security experts. Uh, so this tree uh, highlights the open source nature of Linux, where anyone uh, can, uh, for example, build on, on the Linux kernel. So the vast number of Dijkstra, each uh, the signals for different tasks, has made Linux dominant in many fields, from, as I said, from, from servers to supercomputer, and it's uh, constantly evolving with new distro emerging uh, to meet uh, ever-changing needs. And what else? Uh, well, um, so when you when you use Linux, uh, you are interacting with the system through, through a shell. Uh, when you use the command line, uh, the shell acts as a command interpreter and it takes the commands you type interprets them and tells the operating system what to do. Let uh, quickly go over two uh, common shells. Um, let's see, the first one is uh, the bash or born again shell. Bash is the most widely used Linux shell. It's uh, user friendly with uh, features like uh, common history and autocomplete making terminal work faster and easier. Uh, Bash is also great for, for, for scripting, allowing you to automate tasks, which is uh, why it's the default uh, on, uh, on most uh, Linux systems. Uh, then we have uh, uh, the Born Shell or SH uh, before, before Bash. Uh, there was actually there was a SH, and uh, so it's a SH is a, a simpler shell without advanced features, but it's still widely used, especially for legacy scripts that needs to run on various systems. So SH is essential when compatibility across different platforms is needed and why it matters so the shell is your it's your main tool to communicate with linux whether you are managing files or automating tasks with scripts uh, while bash is the go-to for for most uh, users other shells offer additional features for for more advanced user use cases um, for example um, I mean, along with Bash, other Linux shells like uh, SH and KeySH offer advanced features for different user needs. Uh, let's see, uh, CSH builds on um, on Bash with more powerful autocomplete and ex extensive plugin supports. Uh, 
and it's uh, highly customizable, making it uh, popular with developers who want uh, a personalized, efficient terminal experience. Then we have the corn shell or ESH. ESH blends feature from burning and seashells, uh, known for its uh, strong scripting capabilities. And it uh, handles arrays and functions efficiently, making it ideal for uh, complex automation tasks and compatibility with other Unix, Unix scripts, for example. Both of those shells offer unique features, letting users tailor their command line experience uh, to match uh, their needs and workflow, for example. Then we have uh, another couple of, uh, of shells, uh, of Linux shells, uh, for example, 10x, 10x shell, 10x C shell, sorry, based on the, the C shell uh, with a couple of additional features like autocompletion and command line editing. Uh, it uh, syntax resembles the, the C programming languages. So um, it can be advantageous for, for example, for programmers familiar with C. And then we have the, uh, the Dash shell or Debian Alchemist shell, uh, which uh, uh, it's a, a lighter and faster version of, of, of uh, Born shell. And it's uh, used in system initialization script because it's, uh, uh, it's, it is resource efficient. As you have probably noticed, uh, uh, each of these shells has distinct uh, char uh, characteristics or, or features and functionalities, but uh, they all serve the same basic functions, executing commands and scripts. So bash is uh, generally the default shell, but users can switch to other uh, depending on their needs and uh, and preference. But uh, let's uh, dive into bash, which is the most uh, commonly used uh, uh, command line interface in Linux. So bash is powerful, versatile, and easy to use, making it uh, the default shell on most Linux systems. Um, with uh, with Bash, you can perform simple tasks like uh, uh, listing files or writing scripts to automate uh, complex workflows. And it's uh, the go-to tool for system administrators and developers alike. Uh, and means use Bash to manage system and processes, while developers automate tasks like uh, build, uh, testing, and deployments. Um, so why Bash is so important? Uh, one of the main uh, features is the automation. As I said, uh, Bash script can automate a repetitive task, saving time and reducing errors. Um, for example, daily backups, updates, and running command across uh, machines can all be handled automatically. Uh, then uh, about uh, features about system management, uh, for example, admins, uh, or uh, can um, I mean and means use Bash to to monitor uh, the performance, uh, to to manage files, to configure users, and to handle, for example, networks uh, with easy. And then developer tools. The developers use Bash to automate builds, run tests, and deploy applications, streamlining workflows and saving time. So Bash true power lies in its uh, ability to chain commands, pipe outputs, and integrate with uh, other tools. So this flexibility gives users full control over how tasks are executed. So in, in short, a bash is essential for, for example, Linux users offering a blend of uh, simplicity, scripting power, and automation. Uh, whether managing system or developing software, Bash helps uh, unlock uh, the full potential of Linux. So let's go over the basic of uh, Linux's uh, directory structure. Uh, unlike Windows, where files are organized into drives like a C uh, colon, uh, Linux has um, a single root directory. Uh, 
deploy about this uh, the, the, the slash thing uh, from which everything stem. So here's a quick overview of uh, the key directories. So first of all, we do have here the, the root directory. Uh, is uh, this slash symbol here means the root directory. Uh, it's a, I mean, the starting point of the entire file system and everything originated from here. Uh, then we have the, the home directory. Uh, it's where uh, where each uh, user's personal directory is located. Like for example, uh, I'm Martin, so my directory will be in home uh, slash Martin, uh, and it uh, keeps user files uh, separated from, for example, system files. Then we have the the bin and sbin directories. The bin uh, directory contains essential commands like uh, ls and cp. We are going to see some uh, uh, Linux command in a couple of slides. Uh, but on the other hand, the sbin uh, directory holds uh, system administrator commands like uh, uh, shutdown, which are reserved for uh, administrators and for, for administrations. Then we have the ETC uh, directory. The ETC holds a system configuration like uh, passwords and uh, for managing user accounts. And then the bar directory uh, stores variable data such as uh, log files, and uh, print queues, etc. And the USR directory, for example, uh, houses uh, user applications and software that uh, that uh, is essential for system boot, for example. Uh, then the the DEV directory uh, here um, treats uh, devices like uh, hard drives and USB as files, uh, making it easier to interact with uh, with the hardware. And uh, lastly, here, the TMP directory is a, a temporary space for for files that uh, that don't need to, to keep long term. So it's uh, automatically cleared by the system. And so knowing this structure uh, helps uh, you how to navigate Linux uh, efficiently, making system management and file organization much easier. And uh, here uh, on this slide, uh, we have a, a directory tree that uh, gives us a visual representation of Linux file system. This tree here illustrates uh, how everything is uh, structured under, under the, the root directory and uh, uh, how the system organizes its files, directories, and, and devices. Uh, at the very top of the tree, here we see the, the root directory here, uh, meaning the slash here. This is the, the foundation of the Linux file system. And as I have said before, everything else branch off from here, um, whether it's uh, system files, user files, or even devices, they all stem from this single point, from root. From here, the, the directory tree expands into several key directories, each playing a specific role on how the system operates. So this directory tree highlights how Linux organizes its file system in a clear and structured way. Each directory, as I said, has a specific role, where it's for storing essential file system, user application, or hardware devices files. By understanding a bit more this structure, you will know exactly where to look when managing files, configuring system, or installing new software. So this uh, organized approach is one of the of the reasons uh, Linux is so powerful. It keeps critical system files separated from user files, ensuring stability while providing flexibility for users to uh, I mean, interact with the file system in their own way. Then uh, here, uh, Linux uh, 
user has a, a personal space. Each Linux user has a personal space in, in, in the home directory where all files, configurations, and data are stored. Uh, this is your private workplace, keeping your files separated from the systems or directory. Uh, so your your home directory follow follow the path. Uh, for example, home uh, username or home user. Um, for, for example, if your username is user, uh, your home directory is home username. Uh, and uh, I mean, this is uh, where you will store everything. Let's say documents, downloads, and more. Uh, it's your central hub for for personal files. Then is the configuration files, uh, which are very important. Uh, they are hidden files, like for example the the dot bash rc or dot profile uh, in your home directory. Uh, so let you it let you customize your environment. Uh, these uh, dot files. Um, which are accessible uh, with a specific command, uh, which is uh, ls minus a, uh, help you to, for example, tailor how your system behaves just for you. And the, then uh, we have uh, uh, the personal space, uh, which is, uh, I mean, your your home directory ensures uh, privacy and isolation. Uh, so it's your personalized workplace secure from from other users unless permission are changed and it's uh, where you store files and customize your system without affecting others so in short the home directory is your go-to place to store in files configuring settings and managing your your personal workspace and uh, but then uh, well let's uh, uh, go over as i said or oh, let's go over uh, some of the most uh, commonly used Linux commands. Uh, these this, uh, are the basic you need for, for to to navigate the the command line interface, for example, and uh, manage files on the regular effectively. And uh, once you get uh, the hang of this, uh, you will be moving around the file system like a pro. So first up is uh, a list. Uh, the uh, ls uh, this command lets uh, you list files and directory in the in your current uh, in the, your current uh, location. Uh, so ls, um, uh, I mean a simple list of uh, if you a simple list of everything in the current in the current directory, uh, it won't uh, show hidden files uh, like a uh, bash rc but uh, it's a quick way to to see what's there um then uh, another uh, combination uh, inside the ls command uh, for example ls minus l uh, this this uh, gives you a more detailed uh, information for example it gives you uh, the permissions to so who can read write or execute the file. Uh, it gives you also the file owner, the, the size of the file and the, the modification date. And um, it's uh, great for, for getting a closer look at, uh, at your files. Uh, then uh, we'll have here uh, the, this uh, command ls minus alrt. Uh, this command combine a few useful options. For example, minus a means uh, including hidden files. So with this uh, option, we, we can see the the the, the hidden files like a bash rc. Uh, then the l option, the minus l option uh, means for long format uh, for detailed info information. I mean, uh, then uh, the R or minus R uh, means sorts in reverse order, and the, the minus T here T 
it means sorts by modification time with the newest files at the at the bottom. Uh, so this is a super handy uh, if uh, you want to check the the most uh, recent updated in updates in a directory, for example. And then here we have uh, another combination of of options uh, with uh, within the the command ls, uh, adding the h here. Uh, the, the a minus h option here uh, makes uh, makes file size more readable. Uh, let's say it show the file size in kilobytes, megabytes, or even gigabytes, which is easier to digest uh, than the raw uh, byte counts. Then we have another super important command, which is cd. Uh, C CD, which uh, uh, we use to move uh, between directories, so we can change the current directory. We can move and, and surf between directories using this command. Uh, so, for example, here CD home user uh, takes you directly to the home user directory, so you can move to any directory if you know the the complete path. Uh, then we have another option for chain directory here, chain cd space dot dot. Uh, this moves you up one level. If you are in, for example, uh, let's say uh, home user documents and you type in the terminal uh, cd space dot dot, it takes you back to uh, home user. So it moves you up uh, one level. And then we have another combination of CD uh, with this uh, minus sign. This uh, brings you back to, to the previous directory you were in. Uh, it's a great little shortcut if uh, you are hoping uh, between directories. And then we have uh, another important command here. PWD uh, command stands for printing working directory. So essentially it prints uh, it shows you the full path of the of the current location, and uh, for example, it is super useful for double checking where you are when working deep in nested directories. So by by getting familiar with these basic commands, ls, cd, pwd, for example, you will be uh, well on your way to, to mastering the Linux command line, whether you are listing files, navigating through directories, or making sure you know where you are, these are you go to tools for efficient command line work. Now let's talk uh, about some key Linux uh, commands for managing files and directories. Uh, let's say commands like uh, mk, mkdir, rm, cp, and mb, uh, which briefly these commands allow you to create, uh, create, uh, uh, delete, uh, or move file or directory, making it easier to stay organized and, and efficient. Uh, so let's start by mkdir. Uh, which create a directory. In this case, this example is straightforward, like uh, this uh, create a new folder called projects uh, in your current location, and it's perfect for organizing related files. Uh, another possibility is to uh, use this option, uh, mkdir uh, minus p, uh, and uh, with minus p flags, uh, this flag creates uh, both uh, projects and uh, uh, folder and the new projects folder inside it um, uh, if uh, if uh, neither exit yet. Uh, so it's a great uh, way to create nested uh, directories all at once. Then uh, let's move to RM or remove files or, or directories. Uh, this uh, command essentially Delete, uh, delete uh, files, simple, but uh, be careful because once you delete, it's gone. Uh, 
And then another possibility is to use the, the, the minus R option to uh, delete uh, the folder and everything inside. Uh, it will delete everything recursively. Uh, and then, uh, oh, sorry, and then we have uh, uh, another another command, which is uh, CP, uh, which is means for copy files or directories. Um, the CP copy a file to the next example here, uh, the, 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 the command CP copy the file.ext to the, the com directory of the user. And then um, it is a combination, a possibility of use CP with the the minus R flag. Uh, this option, for example, uh, copies uh, the entire folder to uh, and all obviously and all its content to the uh, a new a new location. And then uh, here uh, we have uh, the the mv uh, command which uh, um, works uh, to i mean move files or or renamed files or or directories uh, so uh, here the first example here uh, we can use uh, mv uh, or move uh, file txt to document.txt in this case uh, the command is renaming the this file to this one, and in the other case here, uh, the the command mv is actually is moving uh, the file to another location to another directory. So these commands uh, mkdir, rm, uh, cp, and mv are are essential for for managing files in Linux. They help you create new folders, remove unnecessary data, uh, copy important files, for example, and move things to to the right places, for example. So keeping your it helps you keeping your your work your flow uh, smooth and and organized. Then next, uh, let's dive into into a few uh, more essential Linux command for uh, viewing, editing, and working with files, for example. Um, in this case, this command, uh, cat, uh, nano, and di are key tools for, for, for file management. In the case, uh, the cat command is a quick way to, uh, to view the content of a file. Uh, it can, it dis displays the content of a file. In this case, it shows the entire content of the file. Uh, so it's easily it's a cut and the the file you you are interested in, and then uh, the the nano command is a, actually is a, a simple text editor. Uh, nano uh, nano is a a, a, a user friendly uh, terminal based text editor actually, uh, and this uh, in this case this command. Uh, this command, this uh, nano file dot txt, uh, this open this file in, in in nano for editing, and if the if the file doesn't exist, it will create it for you, and it's uh, it's simple uh, with uh, several shortcuts like uh, for example, control X to to exit the the file and uh, control uh, how to to save, for example, uh, after you edit it, and then uh, there is also another uh, another terminal based text editor called bi or bim. Um, in this case, this command here opens the file, and uh, in in bi, so in bi you can use uh, the key i to to start editing and for example you can use the the key escape to switch to command mode and then uh, you can save and quit uh, typing for example colon wq and uh, bi has a steeper learning curve but uh, uh, it offers 
and more more customization. Uh, so let's see what is follow here. Uh, when you, for example, when working with uh, computer clusters, uh, whether for um, let's say high performance computing or large scale data processing, you will interact with the system mainly through the command line, obviously. And uh, this is done using the SSH to command to, to log into the cluster login node and uh, the SCP command to transfer files between your local machine and the cluster. So to access the to access the cluster, you will use the the command SSH to securely loading into the login node, which is where you can submit jobs and manage files. Um, here is a, an example of a command to to start an SSH session uh, with the cluster. So you, here in this example, you have to replace the user with your username and the cluster address here with the IP or, or the host name of the clusters. Uh, and then uh, you will be prompted for a password or a SSH key to log in. And once connected, you can start working with the cluster, submitting shows or managing files. So SSH ensures a secure and uh, encrypted connection, uh, protecting your data and login credentials. Uh, so uh, another thing that we can you can do and connect with clusters is uh, transferring files with the protocol with a secure crop protocol copy, which is SCP. Uh, this is to let's see, let's say to transfer files between your local machine and the clusters. So we use this kind of uh, command lines to the so the in, in essence this command essentially what it does uh, this command copies these files uh, to to a specific location on the destination path uh, or on the cluster for example. Um, to to download files from the cluster, uh, we have to reverse uh, the source and the destination. And uh, but uh, just to 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 let you know, once you log in uh, on the on the cluster, uh, you will likely use uh, that uh, in the community is called a shop scheduler, like uh, Slurm, uh, which is a program. Uh, that we use to to submit jobs, and it's very important because this kind of uh, scheduler like Slurm uh, are softwares which uh, manage uh, how tasks are distributed across the cluster, ensuring um, efficient and use and uh, of uh, of all resources. So once you have access the cluster using um the, the the ssh command and transfer any necessary file with the scp the next step is to set up your environment and submit jobs for for processing uh so uh one of the first step is uh, loading modules uh the necessary modules you need to to run uh, everything uh perfect so uh, cluster often uh, use a module system to, to manage uh, software. So essentially you don't need to install uh, everything yourself. Um, actually you ask the administrator to install it for you. Uh, and you only, uh, that you only need to do is to call or load the modules. So you can easily load the software you need using the model uh, command. So as uh, in this example, we use the model command to load, for example, uh, some kind of software here, software name. So this command loads a specific software model into your environment. For example, let's say uh, we are interested in using Python 3.8. 
So here we we'll say the uh, let's say module load Python three point eight. Let's say. So in this case, in this example, uh, this uh, makes uh, Python available for your session uh, to see. Mm, the different modules you have uh, available, you can type uh, module available um, and uh, to submit a shove to the scheduler um, I mean uh, clusters uh, use, uh, as I said use uh, the scheduler to, to allocate a, a task across uh, multiple compute nodes so instead of uh, running computation directly on the loading node, which is uh, just uh, for, for connecting, uh, you should submit shove to the scheduler and it uh, runs them on the computer node. So uh, for cluster using, for example, Slurm, uh, you should submit shoves with uh, sbatch command as here. Uh, your shop scripts define things like, uh, let's say, CPU, memory, runtime, and uh, let the commands uh, to, to, to execute. And uh, once you submit the shop, uh, enters a queue, and uh, the scheduler assigns uh, resources when they are available. Uh, so this ensures the the cluster efficiently manage resources across multiple users so by loading the right modules and using the scheduler to submit shops you can make sure uh, that your tax runs smoothly on on the cluster's uh, power compute nodes so one of the most common mistakes uh, when working on a cluster is trying to run your your shops directly in the home directory or on the on the login node for example so uh, while it might seem convenient it's really important to avoid doing this especially for large or intensive tasks let's break down why you should be using, I mean, the the example, uh, for example, the 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 Scratch directory instead. The one reason is the performance, uh, because the home directory isn't designed for for heavy input output operations, and it's uh, stored on a network file system optimized for reliability not for large scale data processing. But uh, directories like uh, Scratch, on the other hand, are built for, especially for high performance storage. They handle intensive data, reading and writing much better, making your show fast while uh, also reducing the load uh, on, the, on the home directory. On the other hand, uh, we have the space, uh, the space the space limit um, home directories have a, a limited storage often with quotas and uh, they are meant uh, for personal files and like like with data for example not large computational shops so I mean, running big tasks in your home directory can quickly fill up this space, causing issues for you and others. So the Scratch directory uh, offers much more space and it's properly designed for storing large temporary files generated by your shops. And then uh, three, avoiding overlapping uh, Avoid, sorry, avoiding overloading the the login node. Uh, on on login node, it's uh, it's. I mean, the 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 login node is it's shared by, by 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 all users, and it's meant for tasks like uh, preparing shop scripts or transferring files, but not running heavy shops. So if you run resource intensive shops on the login node, 
you risk slowing down the entire system for everyone. Instead, you should submit sh shops to the compute nodes using the shop scheduler. Uh, compute nodes are built for heavy workload, while the loading node should remain free for light administrative tasks, for example. So in short, the, the home directory is great for personal files, but for big shops requiring lots of space of higher uh, or higher input output, for example, always use the scratch directory or a similar one. And remember, uh, run your shops on the computer nodes to keep the cluster running uh, a little bit more smoothly. So, uh, Here's an example of a basic Slurm shop script. Uh, let's break it down. Uh, let's say here the first line uh, called the, the ship bug. Uh, the ship bug uh, tells the system to use the bash shell to run the scripts. Right. This is that's all. Then the second line here. Uh, sets your shop's name to, in this example, is my shop, making it easy to identify uh, in the shop keyword. Then uh, this other line here, the third line, uh, request for task, uh, which uh, could be in this case for CPU cores or for processes, depending on your, on your program. Then uh, here uh, it's a line allocates uh, four gigabytes of memory, so you can uh, adjust this value based on your shop's needs to avoid running out of memory or wasting resources. Then uh, this line, the next line here, uh, it's uh, the time limit. It limits your your shop in this case to to one hour of runtime. Uh, so if you, I mean, if it runs longer, so if you you run is longer than one hour, the scheduler will stop it. So uh, be careful and plan your timing carefully. And then here in this last uh, line of the beginning of the file, uh, this uh, it, it specifies. The, the partition to to run the shop on. Uh, I mean, the partition group uh, compute nodes based on shop types, such as general purpose, um, high memory, or CPU intensive tasks, for example. Um, so after after submission, Slurm finds, uh, finds the necessary resources like uh, CPU cores, memory, and time, and runs the show on the computer nodes. Uh, so in your in your script, uh, you should uh, load uh, the command, uh, I mean, required for load specific modules, um, ensuring the core version of the, of the program is available for you, and then how to execute uh, your, your your shop uh, execute your program with uh, with any arguments for example uh, and uh, using for example s run to ensure it's uh, it's run on the on the computer node not on the on the loading node okay all these lines are uh, inside uh, inside your 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 script okay um so then uh let's see next slide uh okay let's take a look uh, uh, at some additional linux command that are essential for system management and data processing uh the commands uh, here uh, are df uh, she uh, grep and aw key uh this command commands uh, help you monitor this space for example surf for pattern and uh, perform text manipulations 
and these uh, these these uh, tools are uh, especially useful when when you are dealing with a large data set or need to to manage system resources efficiently uh, for example the df command uh, it's perfect for monitoring your system's disk space usage uh, this uh, uh, so shows uh, the disk uh, the disk usage and um, uh, essentially, this shows uh, a summary of this search for all the mountain file systems. And um, here, this um, a modification of this command, which is df minus h. Uh, the minus h flag makes the output human readable, uh, displaying size in uh, kilobytes and megabytes or gigabytes instead of, uh, of bytes. Uh, this is critically useful when, for example, when you are working with large files or databases, helping you keep track of available storage. And uh, then we have the the, the grep command. Uh, grep is a powerful tool uh, for searching through text files. It's great for locating specific words or patterns in in a file. Uh, in this case, the grep, uh, grep command uh, searches for the exact word text inside the, inside the file .txt, and uh, I mean, uh, in this case, it will be showing us all matching lines which contain the word text. And the second example here, uh, it searches for the exact word and counts how many times it's appeared in the file, okay? Um, so uh, grep is, is invaluable for, for quickly finding information in large logs or text datasets. And then we have uh, a AW key. Uh, this is a, a powerful tool for text manipulation and data processing. Uh, this command takes the text uh, processing further by letting you manipulate and extract columns of data. Uh, for example, uh, this first example prints the first column of each line in a file. Uh, and uh, then uh, another example if it searches for a pattern and uh, prints the, uh, the second and the third uh, the third column of, of matching lines. Uh, so uh, uh, AWG is great for working with uh, structured data like uh, CSV files or logs, letting you filter and transform data directly from, from the command line. So mastering these, uh, these uh, commands can significantly boost your, your productivity in Linux making file management and data processing much more much more efficient then uh, let's dive into a few more essential commands uh, that uh, help uh, with uh, text manipulation file viewing and uh, organizing your your file systems uh, this uh, this this commands uh, here is uh, said uh, head or tail and uh, uh, ln uh, minus s, um, are, those are great uh, for modifying the content, uh, previewing files, for example, or creating shortcuts to simplify your work. So start with uh, with said. Uh, it's uh, said is perfect for editing text files without uh, opening a text editor. So it's useful for automating replacements in, in large files. Uh, so here in this example, uh, replace uh, all instance of the word, the word uh, old with new uh, through, uh, through the file. Uh, so, uh, but using the this option here, the, 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 the letter she ensures the change happens uh, uh, 
comp around the whole file. Um, then in this example here, the, uh, the this uh, code displays lines one to ten of the file, which is uh, helpful when uh, working with large files, for example. Then we have here head and tail, uh, uh, which display the the first or or the last line of a file. Uh, in the case of head, uh, head shows the first ten line of a file, and we can use, for example, if you want to see the the first. Uh, uh, 50 lines of a file, we can use uh, the flag uh, head minus n, uh, 50, and uh, the name of the file, and it will show you the 50, the first 50 lines of the file. Uh, then um, uh, we can use the tail command to show the last 10 lines of the file, but also you can use the minus n flag to to see, I mean, the last uh, uh, five lines, let's see. Uh, then there is some uh, modification of this uh, command using the flag minus F, which is really useful. Um, this, uh, this example here continuously updates as new lines are added and is ideal for, for example, for monitoring log files in, in real time. And then we have here the ln minus s command, which uh, means for creating symbolic links. And this uh, example here um, creates a, it's a, it's a symbolic link. It's a, a shortcut to files or, or directories. And uh, this, uh, in this example, as you can see here, uh, it creates uh, a link to a file. In this case, this this file, and uh, this is the uh, the link. It's the original. And this is the link. Okay. Then we have a, a couple of other Linux commands that are crucial for. Uh, for example, for uh, managing text, extracting data, and uh, uh, controlling output, for example. Uh, this, uh, this include uh, WBC, uh, CAT, uh, PIPE, and the redirection. And uh, um, they give you powerful ways to process and save data efficiently. The WBC command uh, provides a quick count of lines, words, and, and characters in a file. Uh, then uh, th this is an example. Uh, here, WC and the name of the file, which uh, it will display lines, words, and characters in file txt. Then the command um, uh, cut. Uh, cut is perfect for extracting specific columns from structured data files like uh, comma separated values. Uh, and in this example here, uh, this command extracts the 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 first column uh, of the comma separated values file by using a, a comma as a delimiter. Uh, then we have uh, the um, the pipe uh, the pipe command uh, which uh, connects uh, commands by by sending the output of one directly into another and uh, uh, then we have the um, an example here uh, here, uh, the example said, uh, I mean, this list files uh, with some information and the pipe, uh, it pipes the result into grep uh, to search for those list, one of the leads that contain the word uh, file. Uh, so pipes 
are great for for creating a streamlined workflow by chaining a multiple commands together. And then we have the uh, redirection command. This uh, the, the the redirection command uh, save the output of a command to a file. Uh, in this case, let's see. Go to the example. Uh, we are printing using echo this sentence hello world and we are redirecting the uh, the printing instead of of print it uh, on the screen we redirect the uh, output to a specific file okay so uh, in this way to store uh, directly on on a file so this these commands are are essential for for handling data and streamline your your tax and links as you can as you can see uh then let's uh let's take a closer look at uh, how the right direction and 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 the appending output uh, work in linux um uh, this uh, these tools help uh, help you control where where the output of of your command goes uh whether it's uh, saving to a file uh overwriting a file or adding content to an existing one without erasing uh, what's already there so um using the the re redirection with the the greater than sign lets you as as we have seen before lets you to save uh, uh, the command output to 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 a file instead of displaying it in terminal uh, here are some examples uh, we we can also combine a redirection with another commands for example we can use uh, here the cat command to combine uh, different the different content of file 1 and file 2 uh, and redirect the output to a combined txt file uh, so uh, but if, if the file already exists it will be uh, overwritten uh, so uh, it's important to know that every time you use the comma the the redirection uh, the target file content it's uh, overwritten uh, if it is already exists uh, so if you for example to appending uh, information or text or whatever uh, to a file without overwriting um, so in, in other words if we want to add content to an existing file without deleting uh, what's a reader we have to use the double uh greater than sign here um for example using this this example we are printing another line and we are uh, adding it uh, to the to the end of uh, the last line of a writing file uh so this uh, this uh, happens another line to the end without overwriting the the existing content so by mastering the use of uh, the 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 redirection or or the appends uh, commands using this you will have a full control over how your you can save or update files in linux let's now talk about how to manage uh, processes in linux uh, an essential part of monitoring system performance uh, and troubleshooting tasks uh, running in the background, uh, like uh, I mean, um, let's say another Linux offers several powerful commands that uh, that make it easy to view and interact with processes. Uh, so let's go through to the most uh, important ones for process and tax management in this sense we have the PES command which uh, uh, it's perfect for checking which processes are running on your terminal uh, on your system uh, it gives you a quick view 
uh, of uh, active processes, uh, but the process that are currently running on on your actual terminal session. Uh, so it's uh, quick and efficient for seeing uh, what's happening in your shell. Um, another combination is use PX plus uh, AUX. Uh, so if you need a detailed view of all ruling processes, we, you can you have to use this this command. So the PS AUX shows everything, including processes from other users and system service. So using this code, uh, you will see, for example, a uh, user, uh, so who the user who, who owns the processes, the process ID, the CPU and memory usage, the start time, the command that launched it. So this command is great for getting a broad view of what's happening across the system. Then uh, there are a couple of other uh, useful commands that allow you to monitor system resources and process in real time, like uh, top or htop. Um, both are great. Uh, for example, a top, uh, it's an excellent tool. It's a uh, perfect for spotting uh, processes that are using too much uh, CPU or memory, for example. So this uh, command gives you uh, a real-time list of active processes ranked by, by resource usage. So the processes using the most CPU or memory appear at the top. Uh, so you can also see in this using this command the process ID, the CPU usage, the memory usage, etc. And this command is ideal for uh, monitoring system performance and uh, spotting any resources host. When you are done, you just uh, have to press uh, the key Q to exit. And then uh, the HTOP, uh, it's uh, for an enhanced experience. There is HTOP, which is like a top, but uh, with a more interactive and visual interface. Uh, HTOP offers a color scope intuitive view of processes. Mm -hmm. So you can scroll through the list, search for processes, and even uh, you can kill them directly from the interface. It also gives a clear breakdown of uh, CPU cores, uh, memory usage, and uh, swap space. Um, and just to, to let you know, if you are using Ubuntu uh, or Debian or Ubuntu-based system, uh, you in order to install uh, HTOP, for example, you only have to type this command, sudo apt get install htop uh, on, on your terminal. And um, so once it's installed, it top make it much easier to manage uh, processes thanks to its uh, user-friendly interface. So um, bear in mind that uh, this uh, these commands are crucial for keeping your system running smoothly, uh, troubleshooting slowdowns, and managing resources efficiently. So when um, when managing processes in Linux, you might uh, need to to terminate the process or, in other words, to kill the process that are, for example, unresponsive or consuming too many resources. So the kill command is your go-to tool for safely ending processes using their process ID. And uh, so the key command uh, sends a signal to a process, uh, usually the term signal, which um, uh, politely asks the process to stop. Uh, here in this example, uh, let's say we have a process ID called one, two, three, four, five. So we use kill and the number of process ID. This command target the process ID requesting it to terminate gratefully. So the process 
is uh, given time to clean up and save uh, data before exciting, uh, which is uh, ideal for non-critical termination. Uh, but uh, if a process won't respond to the term signal, uh, you can use this option here, kill minus nine flag and the process ID, which actually it uh, sends the kill signal to forcefully stop it. So this command actually immediately terminates the process without giving it a chance to save or clean up. Uh, this is useful for unresponsive or, or stuck processes, but should be used as a, a last resort. So uh, in order to find uh, the a process ID, uh, I mean to kill a process, you need to you, you need its uh, the process ID. So you can use the ps command uh, to find the process ID, and also you can use the ps command combined, for example, with a grep a command uh, to find the name of your process, for example. And uh, this command helps you find the the process ID. Uh, based on the process, the, the process name actually. So uh, learning to terminate process safely is crucial for managing systems performance and resolving unresponsive tasks. With these uh, commands, you can quickly and efficiently uh, handle troublesome processes. So Linux. Uh, has a lot of uh, important issues and uh, characteristics. One of them are it's uh, I mean understanding the the permissions is a crucial is crucial for managing files and ensuring system security. So permissions dedicate uh, a lot of uh, uh, bibliography. But uh, in this case, uh, in a short way, permissions uh, dictate who can read, write, or execute a file or directory, which is especially important in multi-user environments. Uh, so let's uh, walk through how Linux, uh, how Linux uh, per, uh, permission works and how to view them. So uh, in Linux, each file, and directory has a set of permission and assigned to essentially to three categories. The first category is the owner, which is the person who own the file. Uh, then the second category is the group, uh, which is uh, a set of users who have uh, shared access to the file. And uh, then uh, is the third category, which means others, uh, which uh, is uh, actually is everyone else on the system. Okay, so uh, in order to view file permissions, you can check permissions using um, this uh, command here, ls minus l uh, command, which gives you detailed information about the fa a file including its uh, its permissions uh so running running this uh running this command might show you something like this here let's uh, break this down in each part so the the first uh character of this uh of this symbol here the first character here uh, represent or I mean shows uh, whether uh, it's a regular file, uh, if it is a directory or if it is a symbolic link. In this case, it's a regular file. Uh, if it were a directory, here should be a D, or if it is a symbolic link, it should be an L here. So in this case, this file is a regular file. Uh, so then the next three character, 
uh, here the next the next uh, set of three characters R W X here represent the owner permissions. So the owner can in this case can read, write, and execute the file. And then the next three characters here uh, shows the own the group permissions. The group permissions uh, can in this case can read and execute the file, but cannot modify uh, or write the file. And then the last three uh, characters here uh, means uh, the group uh, means other. In this case, others, um, which uh, means uh, that others only can read the file, but uh, not write or execute it. Okay, so uh, as an overview, in this using this example, uh, the owner has a full uh, control on, of the file, so uh, they can read, write, and execute. The group, the group uh, can uh, read and execute the file, and others can only read. Okay, so understanding and managing file permission keeps you, I mean, uh, in certain point keeps your your system secure and and organized, especially in collaborative environments where several persons work together, for example. So while well, you can set permission using symbolic notation, like uh, as we see before, uh, Linux also provides a more consistent way using uh, that the, the community call octal, octal notation. Uh, this method assign a number to each type of permission making it quicker and easier to set permissions. So here uh, is the breakdown of uh, of the, the numbers. So uh, in order, uh, the read permissions uh, is assigned to number four, the write permissions is assigned to number two, and the execute permissions is assigned to number one. So you can combine these uh, values to create different permission levels. For example, as you can see here in these examples, uh, here is uh, seven, which means uh, reading, uh, uh, writing, and execute. Which, uh, if you sum you sum this uh, each one of these, it add seven, and the same for uh, the second example, which add six. So it means that. The, the 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 user can the the group or user whatever can read and and write and uh, in this example here uh, five means uh, only can uh, read and execute the file okay so uh, when managing numeric permissions in Linux. Uh, it's uh, essential to understand how this permission works uh, in order to control the file access. Um, so as we as we have said uh, before, this is the the, the numeric permission are, uh, permissions are defined for for the different groups. I mean the the group, the owner, the groups, and and others. And uh, uh, and in this case, it's uh, it's uh, based on a three-digit number, uh, where, as uh, we said uh, before, uh, the first digit represents the owner permissions, the second digit represents the group permissions, and the third position, the third digit, represents others permission. And here is an example, and it's it's uh, straightforward to see. Uh, its uh, its its properties. Then uh, let's see a little more about this. Uh, a, a couple of examples of uh, common permissions. Uh, in this case, the the combination seven 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 means everyone can read, uh, write, and execute the file. 
uh, every every group has uh, the um, the full full uh, permissions. Then seven five five means the owner can read, write, and execute the group, uh, while the group and others can only read and execute. And six four four, for example, in this case, in this case, the owner can read and write, uh, while a group and others can only read. So this numeric system makes it uh, quick to configure and understand file permissions in Linux. So by using these common numeric settings, you can efficiently manage files accessing Linux, balancing the the security with easy uh, with an easy use. So uh, in order to keep going in in file manage management and permissions uh, in Linux. Uh, it's the ch mode ch mode command the C, this command is used to change the permission of a file or or directory uh, so permissions are divided into the same uh, um, properties as a read write and, and execute as we as we say for for other commands uh before and uh, they apply to uh, three categories the owner, the group, and others, as we see. Um, and here there is a basic example on uh, how to change permission permissions of, of a file. So in this case, uh, ch mode, uh, you can modify uh, the, the permissions using the numeric, the numeric uh, notation, but also you can modify the uh, the the permissions using an a, a, a symbolic notations here in this case, and the 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 U here uh, grants the user can read, write, and execute. Uh, the group can read and execute, and others can only read. Uh, um, and uh, in this case. Also, uh, we can, for example, remove permissions, which is also important in file management. Uh, for example, using uh, the, the 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 symbolic example uh, with ch mode she minus w and the file name. In this case, this command remove the right permission uh, for the group uh, on this file. So it's a so this example show how to how I mean this command ch mode uh, gives you a precise control over files access and helps keeps your file security by defining who can read who can execute or who can write the file okay so uh, a part of this uh, command there are another command which um, uh, can be used to change the owner of a file or a directory. In this case, is the chown command. Uh, it's used exactly to manage the file ownership and control access. So this is crucial on systems with uh, multiple users as it uh, dictates who can read, modify, or delete a file. So uh, to change the owner of a file, we can use this uh, this example here, ch own the user and the file. You want to change the, the permissions. Uh, so in this case, uh, this command change the owner of file to a specific user. And then uh, you can change both the owner and, uh, and group to change uh, the i mean uh in this case it it's going to change the owner and assign the file to a group uh but then also you can um update the ownership of for a file or for a di in this case uh, for a directory and all its file inside the directory using the minus r option in this case this uh, 
minus R option mean means uh, you can change the owner recursively. So the, it changed the owner and group of a file or file and directory or subdirectory within the path you are interested in. So why it uh, matters? Because file ownership uh, controls who the, again who can access, who can modify, who can execute, etc., uh, which ensure uh, high security and proper collaboration. So knowing knowing uh, I mean uh, how to use this command like chown uh, can helps you uh, to keep your system uh, secure and organized. And uh, last but uh, not least about this uh, file management and permissions, in Linux you can manage group access to, to files and directory using the command uh, chgrp, uh, uh, which uh, changes the group associated with a file. In this case, uh, this is especially useful when, when you want to control access for for users in, in a specific group, ensuring that everyone in the group has the correct permission to read, write, or execute the file. So in this basic uh, example here, the using the command, the command ch uh, grp, uh, this changed the group of uh, of file txt to, to a specific group. Uh, now all users in that group uh, we have access to file according to uh, the group permissions. Uh, so again, we can use uh, recursively, we can recursively change the group uh, permissions for directory, for example, uh, for example, uh, to so to apply a, a group change to an entire directory and all file size, we use the minus R option uh, here, this command changed the group for the directory and um, and everything inside it, and uh, including subdirectories and files, obviously. So, uh, finishing this first part, why group ownership matters? So, a single group ownership simplify uh, files sharing in collaborative environment. So it allows all users in a group to access the necessary files without having to manually adjust uh, permissions for each individual user. Uh, so the, the, the chgrp command helps uh, maintaining organized and secure groups access across uh, multiple files or directory. So that's uh, the first part and uh, see you 